This video will be a packing demo to accompany the Best Minimalist Travel Backpack review video I posted several weeks ago. I'll start by comparing the actual capacities on these bags compared to the listed specifications using packing peanuts and a marked container. After that, I'll pack them up with all the same gear so you can see how much you can fit in each of these bags. I'll start with the smaller bags and work my way up, the ULA Dragonfly and the Osprey Daylight 26 plus 6. This bag takes into account the exterior pockets on its volume. The total is listed at 30, but the main compartment is only 21.7 liters. Then the Daylight says it's 26 liters, but it has an expansion zipper, increasing the volume by six liters. To test the capacity, I'll fill the bag with packing peanuts and then transfer them into this container that's marked off in 10 liter increments. I got the Dragonfly packed full with peanuts here. I'll transfer them in the container and see how big it is. I'd say they're actually a little low on their estimate. This is halfway between 20 and 30. So I'd say the capacity in the main compartment on the Dragonfly is more like 25 liters. And that actually makes sense because this bag feels like it holds a lot more than they say it does. In contrast, the Military 28 is listed at 28 liters, but in my review last week, it only comes in about 23 liters. So this bag that's listed larger can actually hold less. This next one should be interesting. They list the Daylight as a 26 plus six, so 32 liter max capacity. The Patagonia Black Hole 32 here also lists a 32 capacity, and this one looks bigger. All right, now Daylight testing the capacity in the unexpanded mode. But yeah, definitely not 26, which would be up here. We'll call this 23. Now testing the expanded mode, this thing actually seems like it's quite a lot more addition than just six liters. This expansion zipper from here to here looks like it adds maybe a third of the capacity to the whole bag. So I think I was wrong, it actually was about six liters. It's definitely not a 32 liter pack that would be up here. We'll call that 29 total. Now the last two bags we have are the REI Ruck Pack listed at 28 and the Patagonia Black Hole listed at 32. All right, now. REI Ruck Pack into the tub. All right, a few liters short here. Kind of makes sense because this thing comes with a rain fly packed in here, which takes up some space. So we'll call this thing about 25 liters. Now the Patagonia Black Hole. So this one's actually fairly accurate, only a couple liters short at about 30. So I'll start with a packing demo, put all the same gear in each of these bags so you can see how much they hold. Starting the smallest one, remember this was 23 and these are both 25. I'll do the Dragonfly last because the 25 was the main compartment, but this thing has some large stretchy pockets on the side, which actually can hold quite a bit of stuff. This is all the gear I'll be putting in the Cabin Zero bag. And to try to be fair, I'll use the same gear, same clothes and the same packing cube. So everything's roughly packed the same way. Medium and a small Eagle Creek compression cube. Over here, two pairs of pants, four t-shirts, long sleeve shirt, one pair of shorts. Over here in the small cube, four pairs of underwear, three pairs of socks. Miscellaneous, sandals, toiletry kit, packable day pack, towel, sunglasses, and a synthetic puffy jacket. Fairly minimalist electronics, charger, battery pack, cord, earbuds, and e-reader. I like this bag because even though it's smaller than they claim, it's very easy to pack. It's just one large main compartment. All this gear just easily fits right in there. That's everything packed into the main compartment, sandals, not in a bag, just for demonstration. Then electronics are gonna go in this front pocket. That's everything packed into the Cabin Zero bag. Again, there's not a whole lot of interior organization, so almost all the capacity on this bag you can put into gear. And weighing this, it's about 5.4 kilograms or around 12 pounds. This is the bag fully packed on me. I always thought this was a comfortable pack, partly because it's just small. You can't really get that much weight in here. 12 pounds really isn't that much. And partly just because it has a very comfortable carry system. Now transferring everything into the ruck pack. This is two liters larger according to my test. So it should be a little bit of extra space in here. This bag packs a little bit differently because it's a top loading bag. It's also a little skinnier. So when I try to put the packing cube in here sideways, kind of stretches the bag out. So that's not gonna work. I'll put it in here lengthways, which is gonna give me a little arm width gap over here on the side. Just enough room for that other small packing cube. Stick the puffy jacket down here in the bottom and this other gear, kind of just stuff it in the top. 
Normally I would put the sandals in these outer pockets here. It's kind of a perfect place for them. But just to be fair with the capacity, I don't think they counted this in the volume. I'll just put these in the main compartment. And then all the electronics in this top brain pocket. Now you can see before I zip this thing up, it's not quite full. It's kind of a little space right here. It's probably big enough for maybe like another toiletry bag or a light jacket. And then now zipped up, you can see the bottom on the pack is full, but there is that gap up here on the top. So that makes me confident in my capacity comparison because the specs on these bags are both listed at 28 liters, but this one weighed in at 23, this one weighed in at 25, which makes sense because it's a little bit larger. This bag is a little bit heavier, 5.5 kilograms or 12.2 pounds, about two pounds heavier than the last one. I think this is a very comfortable pack. Shoulder straps fit well, they're decently padded, has good back padding, and there is a small hip belt strap if you need it. Now I'll transfer everything into the Dragonfly. This should pack around the same in the main compartment, but we're gonna have some extra capacity on these exterior pockets. I ended up packing this thing basically identically to the Ruck Pack. Packing cube in here lengthways, enough space over here for these bulky items, and then all the rest of the gear just piled on top. And I'll also put the electronics in the top pocket. It's kind of weird you can transfer stuff out of a 28 liter backpack into what is listed at a almost 22 liter main compartment and actually have extra room. And then just to show you, it is kind of hard to estimate the total capacity on this thing because these side stretchy pockets are so gigantic. You could probably fit two of these 17 ounce water bottles on each side. And then there's also this giant stretchy pocket on the front. front. You could also easily fit two water bottles in there. And then also if you wanted to, it's got this bungee strap for an extra jacket or a towel here in the back. So I'd say they're pretty close on the capacity with the 25 liter main compartment plus another five or six liters on the outside. This bag is probably around 30 liters total. This is the Dragonfly fully packed out in an empty area on the top. I think it looks basically identical to that Ruck Pack in terms of packing style. Took the stuff out of the pockets to weigh it. 5.4 kilograms or around 12 pounds. This is what that bag looks like on me, fully packed. Again, I think this is one of the more comfortable travel backpacks. The straps are a little bit thinner, but they're really wide. And I think that helps distribute the weight good, decent back padding, and the shape of the bag, I think just sits well on my back. Now we'll see what happens with these last two bags. These are around the same volume. Remember expanded, this one was around 29 liters and the Patagonia was around 30 liters. I'll show you the daylight in the expanded mode so you can see how much you can fit on it, the max capacity. The packing style on this bag is quite a bit different, more of a clamshell with two distinct compartments. The main compartment over here is most of the capacity. And then this lid side here is very thin when it's not expanded, but this is where all the expansion comes in, kind of a built-in packing cube. All the bulky stuff in the main two sections of the bag, it has a separate zipper on the outside. You can get into the main compartment, which is where the laptop sleeve is. And then this short top pocket here, which is where I'll put all the electronics. So remember I chose these bags because they're all fairly minimalist and lightweight. The total weight on this thing is again, 5.4 kilograms or 12 pounds, which is the same as the Cabin Zero and the ULA Dragonfly. And you can see fully packed, there is a decent amount of room in this bag, especially on the top here. I don't know if I could quite get away with closing the expansion zipper, but maybe there's about five liters extra space in this bag that I can put stuff in. This is the daylight in expanded mode. I wouldn't say this is an uncomfortable pack, but it has some of the thinner straps out of the bags I'm showing you today. And because of the shape of the bag, it's a little bit shorter so it tends to look a little bit boxy and kind of can feel more rounded on your back when you have it out in expansion mode. Now the Coup de Gras, the Patagonia Black Hole. This is supposed to be the largest pack listed at 32, but in reality, the capacity that I measured was around 30, still the largest pack that we have here. So the shape on this bag is almost exactly the same as the Ruck Pack, kind of a top opening bag here. So I'm gonna pack it exactly the same way. All that stuff packed in the main compartment the same way, except this one has a dedicated laptop and tablet sleeve for my e-reader. And then again, electronics, sunglasses, these miscellaneous things in this top brain pocket. That's everything packed in the black hole. Again, a very lightweight bag. This thing is pretty much the same weight as all the other ones, 5.4 kilograms or 12 pounds total. And then you can see this is definitely the largest bag that I've shown you. 
It's packed out pretty good on the bottom, but there's quite a lot of extra room in the top of this main compartment. The black hole pack on me, these straps are about as thin as the ones on the daylight. However, I think this thing just sits a little bit better on my back, a little bit taller and skinnier, has a little bit of weight distribution. But as far as comfort, those first three bags I showed you are definitely the winners. That's all I have for the packing demo on these five minimalist backpacks. I'll link to the review of them in the description below. And let me know in the comments if you have any questions. And again, thanks for watching.